Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here. Welcome back to part six of my Sekiro Shadows Die Twice full playthrough walkthrough. Uh, so far, we have gone through Sempo Temple and we have obtained the Mortal Blade, and we are now ready to go to the Sunken Valley. Uh, most importantly, before you do so, you'll want to speak with Kuro. He has unlocked this library, and then there will be an item right here, this little bag. It contains the key to the gun fort, which I'll show you here. Where is it? Gun fort shrine key. You need this key in order to get all the way through um, the area. Okay, so starting here at the top of Ashina Castle, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and then. Yeah, let's go this way. So we're going to do like a tiny bit of, s not side questing, but just some like item pickups and we're going to unlock a vendor. Yeah, okay, see? There's armor on the wall now. I mentioned this before. This is the Tengu's armor, it looks like, right? But, you know, you, you decide what you think that is. All right. Cool. So... Go down here. Pretty sure we have this unlocked, but just want to be sure. Okay. I don't know why I thought there was an eavesdrop there. Grab this item. Dragon's Blood Droplet. So these are the graves of uh, Ishin's children, I think, or Genichiro's parents, I think. Um, Lady Tomoe, specifically, who taught him the lightning abilities that he has. Let's go ahead and activate this idol. Yeah, I really could have sworn that there was an eavesdrop here. See when he walks back over here. Yeah, okay. All good. Cool. Nice heavy coin purse. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, this leads back to Ashina Reservoir, which we don't need to go to just yet. I'm going to come over here. Oh, this is the eavesdrop. I'm not going to go that way just yet. Instead, we're going to go down here first. All right. So along this path will be a couple snipers that we got to watch out for. They're big Coheed and Cambria fans. Yep, just like that. They've got big cannons. You really got to watch out. Hoping that they turn around. This is uh, where we fought um, Gyobu, in case you're wondering. Which explains why the Tengu is able to reach it so quickly. Just a little bit more world building for you. All right, so they're talking about somebody. And they specifically call him a badger. That's who we're down here to look for. And that person is the criminal black hat badger. And if you remember, earlier on in the game, 
we uh, eavesdropped on a couple of ministry rats who said that they were looking for somebody named Black Hat Badger. So just keep that in mind. All right, there's another, there's another sniper in that building, so we're going to run around here, sort of take the long way. This way we can just get the drop on them. Okay. So you'll notice that there's a big hole in this ceiling, or in this roof. And then inside is this guy. This is Black Hat Badger. So he's like a pickpocket, and he sells us some stuff. He sells us the anti-air death blow tech, uh, text. Compendium of the Shinobi Martial Art Anti-Air Death Blow. Skill unlocked upon acquiring this item. A technique which serves this shinobi who is not bound by earth in battle. Leap towards an opponent who has exposed himself midair and strike, killing him before he hits the ground. This is a really, really important um, item to purchase. So we're going to get it. But what's also really important is this, the Iron Fortress. This is a really strong sh shinobi prosthetic. And by strong, I mean powerful. It allows you to put a fan around you that blocks incoming attacks. And you can upgrade it um, so it can block like fire attacks and uh, fear-based attacks. Whatever the purple one is, I forget what that's called. But really, really important prosthetic. Um, for now... Yeah, for now, I'm going to go ahead and purchase the anti-air death blow. And then let's speak with him. He tells us, um, yeah, about that. So, we can visit him here again, but he does eventually move. Uh, he moves to try to locate his, I think, his child? Oh, God. That sucked. Not at all what I was intending. Jesus. Oh, yikes. Ugh! Jesus. Timing of that couldn't have been any worse. Let's wait for this person to turn around. Actually, we can just jump over here. Great. Perfect. Okay. Pick up some treasures. All right. Cool. So this bridge is out, but if you look closely, there's an idol down there, and this is the valley where we ran away from the snake. So we're basically just on the other side of these blown out bridges, and the reason they're blown out is because uh, the Ashina forces are trying to prevent the interior ministry from invading them. So that's kind of the uh, the war that's going on in the in the greater context of this game. Okay, so now that that's all cleared out and we've met Badger. Uh, we can now go this way. Okay. 
So you want to make sure you eavesdrop on these guys. Come on. So it just sort of gives you an indication that the war isn't going well. I recommend killing this guy first. Okay. We don't yet have the Mibu breathing technique, so we can't really loot anything in the water. But you, you can swim if you like. Alright, so down here... I'm um, just checking because I feel like there are some items to get. Um, but we're basically going to be following some monkeys. They do die in one hit. They they can be a little frustrating. So, in here, we see a uh, shinobi is dead. It's usually a good indication that we're going to visit a friend. And here he is, the Tengu of Ashino, once again. So he's asking if we master any secret techniques. Not sure if he's talking about the text that he gave us, but let's just see. Let me see. Okay. If you proceed far enough into the story that the Tengu of Ashina has left the Great, Ser Great Serpent Shrine Sculptor's Idol, but you've not yet obtained the Mushin Esoteric Text, Emma will give you the Mushin Esoteric Text after the events of Fountainhead Palace. Okay. So, don't worry about it for now. Unless, I mean, if you've managed to get the final talent out of any tree, great. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Okay, so, now we're going to proceed towards the Sunken Valley. So we just got to jump and hook shot over here. And this is where things start to get a little crazy. There's going to be quite a few snipers. And we got to do some really careful platforming. This game has so many sculptors' idols. Some of them become unavailable, which is fine, but it's just strange why there's so many. Welcome to the Sunken Valley. Alright, so that's one of the snipers I was telling you about. They go down somewhat easy, but they're able to spot you from a mile away. So you gotta be careful. Another one over there. They're basically crawling around this place. Okay. 
can go this way. I'm going to get a prayer bead. But there's a couple snipers here that you got to be careful of. This is why the fan is a really good weapon. But... Fortunately, I didn't have enough Sen to purchase it. Yellow gunpowder. Oh, it's a gourd seed. It wasn't a prayer bead. My bad. Very good. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's continue. There is a like an alternate path out of this place, but I'm deliberately ignoring it because uh, we can't we can't go all the way with it. You need the Mibu breathing technique. Okay, this area is harrowing to say the least. So just do your best to survey the area. Bless me. Okay, I don't think that one's coming back. Oh, come on. Oh, yep. With the big cannoneer there. How dare you. Whenever it rolls away, it basically always has a shot loaded up. There we go. All right. So that's them. All right. So there's a rat here to speak with. We were reckless to go in unprepared. Okay. So, sad to see it, but that rat has died. Go ahead and rest here, and then I'm just going to check something out really fast. Okay. Cool. So we're going to fight a mini-boss right now named Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes McGee. It's really difficult. Um, it's, it's very tough. There's really no way around it. She has. She can sort of hook you with her sniper. She's resting right here in, in, at this Buddha, at this Buddha face right here. Um, you really got to watch out for that. You can try to jump it and stomp on her head, but if you're not quick enough, you can still get caught. She basically catches your feet. But let's go. And this being the gun for it, there's a ton of other snipers. So you just want to try your best to get up here as quickly. Oops. Oh. I think I have to die. Unless is there a way back up? Nah. Oh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that sucks. Anywho, you got to try to get there as quickly as possible. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. Snake Eyes Shirafuji. Yeah, so that's that's the grab right there. <sighs> yeah, after the kick, it's always that big shot. You don't want to get too far to off the ledge because then you will get shot by the other snipers. Ow. Ow. Just mistimed this whole thing. You can parry the shots. It is difficult, though. Okay. Yeah, like I said, she, she can really murder you. And if you were to knock her off the edge, it doesn't count. Like, you have to straight up kill her. That's the grab. Yep. Jesus. <laughs> Come on. She's so hard. Yeah. All right, let's, let's try it again. I'm just going to look her up really fast. Shira Fuji. There's just some cheese methods. But That's one. I'm gonna back up and heal. Again, if you knock her off, you do not get the reward. See, so you gotta be careful. You do not wanna knock her off. You wanna just keep her here as difficult as it can be. You do not wanna knock her off. Ugh, yeah. Sucks. Oh my god. Get me up. <sighs> Heal, Sekiro? Oh my god, dude. I kept healing, but it wasn't doing anything. Great. That's Snake Eyes Shirafuji. One of the more difficult uh, mini bosses of the entire game. 683. I'm tempted to go back and spend this Sen and purchase the fan just because it helps so much here in Gunfort. You know what? Yeah. Let's do this. Let's go back. And I'm going to visit the Memorial Mob. Sell my coin purses until I have 1400 And then we'll go purchase the, uh, the fan from Black Hat.
So just take a moment. So, how much? Is it? I have 683. Cool. Okay, then we do the old grave. And then we can drop right into Black Hat's little house. Casa de Black Hat. Oh, wow, that's lucky. It was 1,600. I thought it was 1,400. So he tells us that he's going to go to Sempo Temple. And he says that, you know, he has enough money to make arrangements. So what that means is he has enough money to sort of make funeral arrangements for his family. Uh, we will learn more about Black Cat in another part of the walkthrough when, when we start trying to access the secret endings. Um, yeah, so we'll figure all that out. All right, now let's travel. We got to go back to the dilapidated temple, get the uh, prosthetic fitted. Forgot about that. The loaded umbrella. It's the loaded umbrella magnet. Protect against attacks from all directions. Hold it out while moving to protect from light attacks. Temper magnetic shaft. I'm doing the by spinning the umbrella. Okay. Cool. So let's go ahead and equip that. I'm going to drop the shuriken for the loaded umbrella. Looks like that. And so we can walk and not get shot. It's pretty cool. All right. Back to Sunken Valley. We'll continue on. Luckily, homegirl is dead. No more snake eyes. So we're going to come across a big bridge. And this bridge sort of has like a false floor. It will break. So what I recommend doing is taking out the loaded umbrella. Nope, not doing that. Take it out, and then we're going to walk. Big 
This is why we use this thing. Take it out again. Walk across. You want to start tilting it towards the left because this doesn't really guard you. It doesn't really guard your back. Oh, yikes. That, that was a shot. But there you go. Do you want to be careful? Because sometimes there are snipers behind you. Okay. Oh boy. It gets so loud here. Hello. I will warn you, there are a lot of enemies here, so don't think you're safe. Also, on the paths, these are explosive. Um, come up here and I'll explain it. So, ooh, hello. All along the floor down here are little explosives. So you see these patches inside of the dirt? Or I guess they're really inside of like little patches of hay. Those are explosives. And I don't think they do a ton of damage. I could be wrong about that, but they're primarily there to alert enemies. So you really don't want to hit them. I didn't even know that guy was there. Yeah, I don't think they do any damage, but again, I, I could be totally wrong. I didn't forget anything. No, I think we're good. Okay. Now it's time to go inside. These guys primarily just make noise to alert people. I think we're safe, though. Jesus. Nope, not at all what I was asking you to do. <sighs> Jesus. Ow. Drink, 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 drink. Oh, God. God and baby Jesus. Don't worry, we're coming up uh, on a healing, uh, on a checkpoint soon. Are you kidding me? Oh, why do you... Hello, do you have a reload time? Thank you. Okay. Very good. Right. Let's 
go ahead and rest at this idol. And then we're going to fight a mini boss. So you see uh, all those down there. Don't worry about that just yet. Because for now we're going to fight a mini boss. And it's one of these guys that looks like Vega from Street Fighter. Long art said to be giraffe. Oh, come on. How's this happening? Okay, that's one. This is where it really becomes a rhythm game, especially with these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, something I haven't really covered is if if oh Jesus if you just hold the block button you will greatly reduce your posture it's like the quickest way to reset yourself Jesus that was close anyway just holding the block is the quickest way to drop your posture. So if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, try to get away from an enemy and then just hold block and reduce your posture. Okay, so here we got the large fan. This is yet another prosthetic. It allows you to blow enemies away. Uh, before we open the door, we can come down here and then we can kind of walk around. Yep, there's treasure right here. More yellow gunpowder. And like I said before, don't worry about the bridge underneath. So we can just walk through here. There are some small enemies here. I think it might just be mostly gecko, but it might be those tiny Vega dudes. I kind of can't remember. I want to go the other way first. <laughs> this whole cave is gecko. Some divine confetti, so always very helpful. Let's go this way. Yeah, okay, we got some tiny Vega dudes down here. These guys really don't do much damage, but they can get overwhelming. And of course, you have some gecko spit on you, so just be careful. Contact medicine, prayer bead. All right, now we can go back.
here we are, back at the save idle. So we said, don't worry about it until you're ready to actually go through it. All right, so we can rest here. So what do we have on the skill tree? Nightjar Slash. Clean skill for a few seconds after deflection increases damage to enemy posture from all sources. Increases the damage inflicted to posture upon performing a successful... Okay, this is very helpful. Definitely want that. Okay. Cool. So, let's go into Sunken Valley. Or further into Sunken Valley. And this is what you need the key to the Gunford for. Gunford Shrine Key, rather. Okay, so while we're here, we're going to run into our good friend, the Basilisk. Here in Sunken Valley Passage. And the Basilisk is going to be a real bro, and he's going to knock us off the bridge here. Yeah, this is unavoidable. So we get sent down into the water. And then you want to move, try to move very carefully through the water. But there are some... Jesus... You know what's kind of funny is I don't really remember how to do this. Let's go over here. Go through this. And then we can run through, get to the other side, and activate the idol. Alright. So, now that we've done that, I want to tell you, there is a way to kill that Basilisk. And we will do it at some point, but we're going to ignore it for now. But don't worry, you can get your revenge on this guy. Adamantine scrap. Okay, I just want to see if there's anything up there. All right. Great. So here in the Sunken Valley, I want to tell you, I'll show you something really quick. I've mentioned this before, but there's really no, like... There's no fall damage in Sekiro as long as you land on top of an enemy with an execution or if you grapple hook on your way down. You can jump from here all the way down to the bottom and manage to not take any damage, and you actually wind up killing a monkey down there. Oh, hello. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but that's one way to go about it, if you like. For now, we're just going to sort of travel along these Buddha passages. But you do have to watch out, because some of these monkeys have rifles. Yep, like that one right there. Some of them have swords as well. <sighs> uh, damn. Let's see how this goes. Contact medicine. Ako sugar. All 
All right, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know these guys were here. Had no idea. Oh, hello. Yeah, I didn't know these guys were here. I think they only show up if you do this in one order. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just never come this way, but... I had no idea they'd be there. Okay, so... Here's what we're going to do. Change the axe out for firecrackers. And then firecrackers startle beast enemies. That includes monkeys. So we're going to give these monkeys a little scare. Find the one with a gun. <laughs> Feel free to frighten him again. You usually can hit something. Uh, you can usually only like stun something three times. So you got to be careful of that. Oh, God. If you uh, equipped that um, leaf, the autumn leaf or whatever it was, if you managed to equip that uh, before doing this, I'm pretty sure you can just use that to whisk them all away. I'm almost positive that works. All right, get some more monkey boos. And then you can use this to start descending to the surface, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Instead, oh, what? Instead, we're going to go to the idol, which is right over here. Let me have a lady right here. This is Fruit of the Serpent. The dried one is down here. And then you can either give her rice or not. I kind of don't remember what happens if you do give her rice. I think she has like a moment of clarity and tells you specifically how to get it. Um, but I'm not going to bother with that. So I'm going to rest to restore everything. And then we have a choice. So we can either go down here and fight the boss. That is the boss right there, the Guardian Ape. Or we can continue down to the surface, which is what I would rather do at this point. We're going to go to the surface, and we're going to visit the memorial mob, but we're basically going to stop there. Uh, we're going to clear out some stuff, kill a bunch of enemies, um, including a pretty deadly white monkey, um, but we are not going to proceed into the cave. The cave is... You want to save that for when you're trying to get the endings. This is poison, so recommend equipping. Where is it? Some antidote powder.
Okay, now we're going to go to the other side. The white monkeys actually have a decent amount of health. All right, so this is the memorial mob right here. So we'll visit him just to sort of see what he has to offer. I think he has a poison gourd. Yeah, the green mossy gourd. You can drink this to um, reduce poison if you like. Um... Yeah, let's go ahead and buy it. All right. Forget how you upgrade that, but... Either way. Okay. All right. So this is that island I told you you could just totally jump down into. That's where this is. So there's a white monkey over there. that oh whoa that was impressive all right here's what we're gonna do oh jesus christmas oh oh my god Okay, let's try to fight this thing again. <sighs> oh my god. Got him. Wow, that was really tough. <sighs> okay. That was insane. All right. Fulminated mercury. This is actually a pretty rare material. So you definitely want to grab that. That's the reason for the season of coming over here. The raison d'etre, which means reason to be. Alrighty, cool. So what we can do now is um, we can go ahead and use a homeward idol, go back to the last communed idol.
Okay. So, you... I think we're fine with the amount of flasks we have. Um, okay, so this is the Guardian Ape. If you're watching this walkthrough, and given that it's the year 2021, um, I'm going to have to spoil something for you. If you don't want this spoiled, try to beat this boss on your own. Um, I always put timestamps in these videos, so just skip ahead to after the boss fight if you don't want to watch this boss fight. Okay, I'm going to assume you have left, and now I will continue talking about this boss fight. This boss fight uh, is the sort of twist moment of Sekiro. So we're going to kill this boss. I believe it has two, two health bars in the first phase. And then when we kill it, we're going to chop its head off using the sword that's inside of it. However... <laughs> that is not the end of the fight. It will resurrect without a head, and then we have to fight it for real. During that final phase, the loaded spear is your best friend. Um, you are able to rip the slug out and deal a ton of posture damage. So make sure you do that. Other than that, it's a pretty standard fight. When it gets its sword, it's actually not even that much more difficult so feel free to just kind of go after it yep that's a grab totally forgot about that jesus this is, this is off to a, a real banger of a start uh firecrackers are also very helpful because it is a uh a beast fight do you yep it farts on you and then it will also throw its own feces at you. Because, I mean, it, it's an ape, right? It makes sense. You can jump over the grab. Ow. And this is sort of one of those fights that... Um, watch out. It's going to writhe when it does that. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Always watch out for that. And then it will, after it farts, it will always throw the dung pile at you. I mean, it, it wouldn't be a Souls game without a dung pie. Oh, yeah, it's going to writhe around. It should really heal. Let me not chase after it. God, we're so close. There we go. All right. So we're going to rip its head off. And then we get a Shinobi execution. But it ain't over yet, ladies and gentlemen. It ain't over yet. So now he's going to fight us with a sword and his head. Yeah, you want to be very careful with that. Let me bust out some pacifying agent. Ugh, oh, come on, I was healing. When it lands on its head, or where its head should be, yeah, you want to do your best to parry that. When that happens, if you're able to parry that whole sequence, then you can uh, put the spear into it. Get away, get away. 
I really haven't done anything to it yet. No dice. There we go. Tons of posture damage. You want to back out. Yeah, if you can manage to parry that big slam, just push the spear into it into the boss and you're good to go. There you go. That is the Guardian Ape. However, you will notice that uh, Sekiro does not kill the slug and the boss just disappears. He does not use the mortal blade there. That is for a very specific reason. And you should have also heard another ape's roar that's for a very specific reason. It's because there's another ape out there. It's mate. So we're going to come across that eventually. We also get the slender finger prosthetic. Really important prosthetic. All right, so let's go ahead and rest. But I'm going to come into the little cavern here, and then we're going to get the flower. So this is the Lotus of the Palace, which is a white lotus flower found blooming in the depths of the sunken valley where the fountainhead waters pool deeply. The flower's aroma attracts female apes, thus the guardian ape carefully tended to it so as to offer it to, its, to his bride. One of the incense ingredients sought by the divine heir for immortal severance. So this is one of the key items that we need. Okay. Let's go ahead and travel to... Yeah, the upper tower. Okay. Speak with Emma. Give her gourd seed. Okay, she doesn't have anything to new. Anything new to say, rather. Speak with Kuro again. Okay, so we get the pages diary. An old diary entry written by Takeru's page. And for those of you who do, who do not know, a page is sort of like a knight's or a samurai's errand person. So somebody who would go out and you know do research and go run the errands of the knight or the samurai. Lord Takeru held his arm over the incense burner and attempted to cut it with a sword. But incredibly, his wound healed instantly and not a drop of blood was shed. Lady Tomoe said, Without it, your blood cannot be spilled. What could she be referring to, I wonder? So, 
to speak with Emma. Okay, so now we get the Immortal Severance scrap, part of the Book of Immortal Severance left behind by Takeru. With mortal blade in hand, my blood may be shed. With my blood, the aroma will be complete. The divine realm will be in reach. Immortal severance will be at hand. I must ask Tomoe to assist with the beheading. So now we get Okami's ancient text, an old note left by the Okami clan who sought to reach the divine realm. A fragrant, shro- a f- a fragrant stone enshrined in a village within the depths of Ashina. One must throw oneself for it to be found. With this, the fountainhead fragrance is complete. Let us depart now to the divine realm. So we have to find a bottomless hole So, uh, let's see if Emma has anything else to say. No. Okay. So, I want to see if we can eavesdrop on Kuro at all. There are various uh, times at which you can eavesdrop on him. Doesn't seem to be one of them. Try on this wall, though. Yeah. Okay. You want to do your best to eavesdrop on him whenever you find yourself able. Okay, now that we have the mortal blade and the flower... Evening has descended upon Ashina. There you go. Looking real nice. And so now we only have one place left to go for now. And that place is Ashina Depths. And we'll do that in the next part of the walkthrough. Um,. In the next part of the walkthrough, we will get the stone that Kuro was just referring to. And after we acquire that stone, we will come back here, and then there will be a new boss to face. I will tell you, though, and we'll cover this... Um, <sighs> trying to decide how to cover this. Basically, after we get this stone, we can end the game. You can get the quote-unquote bad ending... But that bad ending is the only way to fight two of the game's bosses. So um, I think what we'll do is we will go through the next area, which, I don't know, doesn't really have many mini-bosses. We may be able to do the whole thing, um, including... Okay, here's what we'll do. We'll go get the stone in the next walkthrough, and then we'll worry about it after that. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it here, but I hope this has been helpful to you. Guardian Ape is a real roadblock. It took me many attempts on my first playthrough. I'm actually surprised we got it the first time there, uh, but we did, and that's all that matters. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when you guys go live. You can also check the playlist in the description. I did cover this game with individual guides back in 2019 when it first came out, so there's plenty on offer. As always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.